Hello everyone, this is Godzilla Lover 425 here. And uh, welcome to the Isles News. Right now I'm doing Isles News before uh, until the game's optimized for me to do actual gameplay, I'll do the Isles News anyways. This will become the Isle channel anyways. Ah let's start off with some hypo Rex. So Catwing, our lovely art creator of the Isle, decided to make a new design version of the hypoendocrine Rex. And so, we got this monstrosity of a beast. It has those ridges. It actually, one of the main things I really like about this design, not to lie, not gonna lie, the tusks. That's gonna be a huge thing that happens. It looks really nice. I like the tusks a lot. The armor plating around this mouse face. The crest. That just makes me really love it. So yeah. We have the hypoendocrine rex. It looks, it looks all beast. It looks like it still has the back plating. What it usually does. Oh, oh. Give me a second. Looks like it still has the back plating like it usually does. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, yeah, it, it travels up the tail, up to the back. Then you got that ridge over its hips. And then the. the this looks awesome. You can see the bones, the bones sticking out, and then the up ridge, and that's all bone plating. It looks really cool. This is actually what it looks like with its mouth closed. It looks like a uh, one of those bulldozers where you ram and pick up dirt and stuff. I think that's going to be used for ramming and stepping. And actually... I'm looking at this, and it actually reminds me a bit of, if you ever watched Godzilla 1998, look at that, look at that, look at that draw, and compare it to the 1998 version of, uh, 1998 version of Godzilla, it is very similar. And then here's the, uh, where, uh, This is where these two are on the top, and they fit through here, and then these fit through here. And that's the regular tusk where you see Johnny out the mouth. So this is the inside look of it. Top jaw, bottom jaw. You get it. So yeah, Tapwing created this. We don't know if it's coming in the game yet. Give me a second, let me move that out of the way. We don't know if it's coming in the game yet, but I can't wait. Honestly. And so yeah, this is what it is at current moment. Uh, all right, let's minimize that. So that's the Isle of Phase Two. You, I think you already seen the fish that there came out was the Overraptor running. All right, now here's the next one. Piece of new by news we gotta give you. The roadmap. What's coming after? Uh, what came after uh, is coming up after since they released Everma. Roadmap expectations. We have not labeled these as numerical months or dates, but batches of dinosaurs that are designed around each other. These batches are not in particular release order, but we will be selected based on the needs of the game. Each batch is designed to function as a cohesive. As possible together, we will communicate deeper details to you as the batch is selected to be delivered. The plan, is, the plan is to make sure a base dinosaur is featured complete before you begin putting more that will branch off and share to make kennets. It's like basically the Spino. If they enter into the Spino, the Suko, the Baryonyx, and all of them will fall after. Basically the feed, fish feeding stuff. 
And also, along with that, would be the Dinosuchus. If the Dinosuchus was put in, then follow that would be Aquatics. A lot of other aquatic creatures. Same goes for Tyrannodon. This means nesting, night vision, grouping, diets, and anything else shared among every single dinosaur will be in the game before the roster moves forward with dinosaur implement implementation. If there are delays, we will begin immediately working on the next dinosaurs and not wait until the end of the month to start the next batch. Lastly, not to be things are subject to change, but lastly, not to be the things are subject to change. Yes, everything is subject to change because anything could happen to uh, hinder what's coming next. Anything. So don't get your hopes up for any of these badges coming up when I'm showing you. If there are delays, we will begin immediate work on next dinosaurs. It's like if they have delay, if uh, the Spinosaurus is delayed, they immediately go on to the next batch, basically. And not wait until the end of the month start to start to start the next batch. Lastly, uh, give me one second. Lastly, not to be the things are subject to change. Oh yeah, you already said that. Uh, we will reach out and identify the issues if need be, alter the schedule of dinosaur implementation, or put something else entirely as needed if the outcome isn't what we plan or isn't benefiting the game environment. So. If the, if the dinosaur doesn't work at all, they'll put, replace it with something. Which makes me nervous because I really want the Spinosaurus in there. I love the Spoon Boy and he looked awesome. He was in the trailer too. So yeah. Alright, here's batch A. Remember, this is all scheduled to be changed if, if need be. And they, couldn't, and they might not be in, who knows. That's if they work. So, Batch A. Small Herber A and B. Homo cephali and Avaceratops. They both cover the range of small, but I will help you, my friends, in the tree <laughs> dinosaurs. Avaceratops, despite being a retro animal, we have never given proper attention play or playability, so we feel this is a solid addition alongside Homo cephali to provide players with two creatures that can joust, headbutt, and spar amongst themselves. There's a possibility of burrowing to prevent their imminent homicide. Uh, that's a <laughs> pun. Ooh, this is what I'm looking forward to. Since they already have the design and everything. I don't know if they have the animations. I did see the, des the design. Nocturnal, venomous, and certainly terrifying to hear. Everyone wants the Troidon. Yes, yeah, basically in Jurassic Park, the Troidon was venomous. One venomous bite and you'd be dead. And we're pretty sure there's already an unspoken rule that any Troidon is part of the horde. Capable of hunting small creatures with raw damage from claws and ven venom and time will bring down large animals. If a true Don is willing to sacrifice so the horde may eat. So, if you do play the true Don, always play in a group. One Trudon falling can mean food for everyone else. So I like, I have a hilarious idea of what could probably happen when this thing comes out. Just picture, uh, let's give you a scenario. A Tenato. Tenato is drinking water and he decides to go out in the woods or in the rainforest to get something to eat. Well, a Trudon comes by, bites, and then another bites, and then another bites, stacking on that poison. And then they all of a sudden stop. And you look out in the distance and you see all these eyes looking at you, watching you as you slowly suffer and die. Can't do nothing to help yourself. Can't get rid of the poison at all. Or the poison goes slowly down over time, but before you... but. Every time it does, they stack on another po poison, and a few of them dies. But eventually, you die yourself. And that's what I think is going to happen. So, it's a nice addition to the aisle, and it could prove to be very horrifying, especially playing at night.
All right, back to me. Small herbivore A and B, dry source, and galleon the long-legged people, the very fast ones. This batch of herbivore selection comes from the obser observation of Utah and their direct needs. Currently, they need more accessible prey items that, than just a juvenile tenato, as they don't stand to an adult in single combat. So, the devs have been watching people play, and basically, the tenato easily can one uh, easily can take on a Utah alone. I played a little bit because it was still laggy, but I still managed to kill a. I was a juvie uh, tenato, but I was still able to kill a juvie Utah. So picture uh, trying to kill uh, a adult Tenado as a Utah, adult Utah. It's still hard. It's just need a group. So this dictates the necessity of two smaller dinosaurs that not only could fall prey to adult Utah raptors, but juveniles as well. Dryosaurs and Gallimaurs are most likely to fit this bill, as they are agile, but not so large. A senior Utah raptor could not hunt them even at respectable peak physical sizes. So yeah, Dryosaurus and Gallimaus are going to be an excellent addition to helping a Utah Raptor, but this isn't the only thing they're considering for that batch B. We're getting a return of one of the oldie but goodies ones, the Carnotaurus. And what they're saying right here, I, I think they're fitting Carnotaurus for as a plains type uh, animal, not the rainforest animal, so you'd be out in the plains and you can see them around. Of course, they need room to run. So, well, if you have... Alright, here we go. Well, if you have two prey items in fields, you need a proper hunter for it. The Carnotaurus is perfect from retro re roster of dinosaurs that offsets the Utah's raptor's superior maneuverable maneuverability for sheer speed, restricting it to an ideal hunter in the plains. So it needs room so the plains biomes of the map will be perfect hunting ground for it. The introduction of the Carnotaurus will also put the Tenato out of its current position as simply standing the ground against any predator stay for their largest of the Utah Raptor packs. So basically you got a hunter that can actually take on the, the Tenato and kill it. So it is, uh, make Tenatos a more, lot more feared, fearful of uh, other carnivores. The introduction of the Carnotaurus will also put Tenatosaurus out uh, we already said that. Lastly, the t somewhat fragile build of the Carnotaurus will not make it immune to the offense of a group off offensive of a group of Utah Raptors in adulthood, while its younger years makes it extremely successful to lone Utah Raptors. So if you're a large group of Utah Raptors and you're hunting a lone Carno, you can kill it. And well, when the Carnotaurus is younger, it can be killed by one Utah. If don't. So, I looked up this creature. It actually is feathery and everything. So, the batch C, a small herbivore A, this is the aquatic batch. The biopisaurus, biopisaurus, I don't know how to say it, but I'll say biopisaurus. Biopiasaurus is the first small, considerable outlandish introduction to the isle, so it's a, it's a totally new creature altogether. We want to move this batch into a aquatic thing, placing the Biopias towards something that resembles a penguin's movement in water, while still being able to move a bit on land. So basically it'd be mostly aquatic, to some degree. Dietary and societal needs for this dinosaur is focused all around water, and the consequences thereof to see how this affects carnivore movement and behavior. So yeah, that's what this creature is going to probably be food for uh, Pseudomimus, Baryonyx, and Dinosuchus. Di I know dinosaurs can eat other things as well. So having a herbivore consistently in a water environment, be it rivers, swamps, or both, dictates the necessity of necessity of having a carnivore that shares the same environment. The lingering threat will give bipeds something to consider when entering the water. None of the suggested carnivores have any distinct or power advantages on land. So we got the Sucumonis, Baryonyx, and Dinosuchus. See, Sucumonis or Baryonyx. So they're going to choose between these two. And then Dinosuchus is surely coming in with that. So small, small herbivore A and B for Batch D. 
we got the Pachycephalosaurus and Diaboloceratops. Or the Dibu. <laughs> so much like Batch A, this is the larger. I will headbutt you, my friends, and tree batch. But this time, things die. So that's neat. In reality, this piggybacks off the sparring, sparring mechanic we want to introduce with the Homo, homo Low and Avoceratops. Just ramped up with size to accompany this batch's prayers. Now, we got another carnivore returning from the old retro ones. Everybody remembers the Ceratosaurus's retro life and plans, but we fortunately stopped his development to move towards Everma. But it seems only fair to bring it back into play. A beefy, brutal brawler that's meant to sustain the most grievous of injuries. The Ceratosaurus will be one of, the, one of the few sections that can both cannibalize its own species and eat the most putrid, putrid carcasses without concern. So if he says, so if it wants to eat any, any of its other species, it can. If it wants to eat a rotten freaking leftovers of uh, something else, it can. So he's, he's saying this right now. It will be one of the few exceptions to both cannibalism of his own species and eat the most putrid carcasses without concern. This is what brings to me in mind a idea I have in my brain. And Dondi, if you're watching this video, Consider it. The Majungasaurus. It too was a cannibal of its species. And if it wants to eat uh, putrid carcasses, it can do it as well. I think Majungasaurus will probably fit perfectly alongside Ceratosaurus. Ceratosaurus and Carnosaurus as a medium carnivore. So if you ever want to consider that as an animal, Majungasaurus is one of them. And so, yeah, this has been the roadmap. My ideas on the roadmap, I like it. And I'm looking at it now. They don't have no large carnivores yet. It's making you think what's going to happen with the large carnivores. Like the Giga, the Rex, the because we all know the Rex is coming back. We all know that. Rex, Giga, Spino. So, I'm I'm curious on that. If they ever come out with the uh, those, because we know the reason why I th I know the Rex is coming back because they are making the strain for the Rex, the hypoendocrine stain. And in order to have that, you need the Tyrannosaurus Rex along with it. Hence, everybody thought the Rex can be gone. They don't have to deal with it. For now, I tell y'all right now, that's just for now. It will be most likely coming back. So yeah, this has been the roadmap that and the hypoendocrine Rex. And this has been the end of my uh, news. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel and you hope to see more IELTS content in the future, hit that subscribe button. And I'll be lovely, like, like, lovely to see y'all next time. Goodbye, y'all. Guys, the Lover45 out.